Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me as I explore, investigate, examine the wide world of pens. I haven't gotten a Pen BBS pen for a while. This is a new model, new filling system, and I felt it deserved being held up by a crab spinning on a turntable. And I got it in vermouth because I think this semi-clear resin really shows off the filling system and I think that's really where this pen lies. There are some interesting features which we're going to explore and we're going to see if this is a pen that you might want to purchase or buy. Stay tuned while we investigate this new pen. Hold on to your horses, it's a white box. Gee, where have we seen this before? Hundreds of times. As we can see, it's labeled, as they've been labeling Pen BBS pens recently. The model number 489, the color 21, which is vermouth, and a fine nib. So, let's examine this a little closer. Ms. Sizemore and Mr. Seymour No, The lid slides off, revealing a nice, sturdy cardboard box. Magnetic closure, red and black. We'll see an instruction manual, which is pretty clear on how to fill the pen. And in case you didn't know what it was, it's instructions. And in Chinese on the other side. The pen is held down by an elastic strap. It comes in a nice condom, slides out, and we see the pen. First impressions, is this nice? It has good weight. You know, it feels like a quality pen. Nice clean looks. Now the first thing you notice is there's a white plastic insert there. Could have been clear. That way it wouldn't have interfered too much with the color of the pen. A flat finial at the top with a little bit of a curve to it, concave curve. If we go to the bottom of the barrel, nah, just a flat end, nothing fancy, so it doesn't match. Silver ring there, your classic cap band that Pen BBS has been doing for a while. Pen BBS logo, 489 Shanghai, China. That sword clip, the cap comes off in, ah, less than one and a half turns. We'll see metal threads here, kind of like the 456 has. And we can see some a metal tube shining through the barrel. It's one reason why I got vermouth is because I wanted to be able to see that. And I think the green vermouth color just adds something nice to it. If it's good in a hand, that section's a little bit smaller than I would expect for a pen this size with a nib that size. And the color looks a little different because there's a you know, a frosted uh, nib collar in there. It looked like it could be a standard nib collar, but we'll explore it a little bit later when we look at the bits and pieces of the pen. You may ask how you fill it. Well, you unscrew the blind cap. It doesn't take too many turns, and you feel good resistance because there's a nice um, O-ring there that seals that this sleeve keeps it airtight. As we come up to the top, it comes to a stop. Put the nib in to ink. You push down in one motion, and at the very end, it'll pull up ink. And you leave it set there for five seconds, and you're ready to go. That's the theory. We're going to explore it a little bit more. Stay tuned. So here I've taken pen apart as much as I'm going to take it apart. There must be something, yeah, there's a screw that holds this sleeve into the uh, blind cap. And when we look at the Schaefer, we'll see that taken apart. There's also a screw with a Phillips head, that was a flathead, holding this clip in place. It's a one-piece cap so there's no finial to screw in. 
here's that sleeve that hold, well here's the sack holder with the metal sleeve around it and there's that hole in the middle that when you push down the outer sleeve it compresses the sack and then when you get to the bottom there's some type of a release that then releases that pressure on the sack and the sack expands the instructions say wait five seconds for that to happen here's the section which appears there's a insert in there but it doesn't come out easily you can see it's notched just like other sections and it's frosted so I think this is that upgrade that hopefully won't have that cracking issue we've seen in those uh, nib collars in earlier versions yeah it looks like the standard feed and of course a standard stainless steel fine nib with a little upturn on it and we know that there's a lot of other PMBBS nibs now, especially their calligraphy nibs that we can put in place. So I think this whole scenario is way overkill to fill, to put a little bit of capacity into a pen, you know, much less than almost any other filling system that you have. So here's a touchdown that I took apart because I was going to play my hand at fixing it. And there's that screw that holds this outer collar into the blind cap. Well, this works the same way as it does in the Pen BBS version, but there's a hole there. And this is that sleeve that comes down. And as you can see, when those holes line up is when the air goes back in. So when you're pushing it down, it puts pressure, compresses this sack that's inside, which I've removed here. And that's how it works. Touchdown filler, I think, is the correct name for it. Yes, the big one goes up there, the little one goes up here. And there's a nice tubular nib that was in the pen, which, ah, she lives. It's got a little bit of an upturn to it. What a surprise. So I actually sent away for a kit. They sell them to restore the Schaefer Touchdown. And they give you a replacement sack, a gasket, two gaskets. So, needless to say, as you can see, I haven't restored this one. And I'm not motivated to. In this situation, here's that sack inside of here. I'm assuming that you could pull this apart, but I don't know why you would want to. Hopefully that has a long life to it. Or maybe Pen BBS will sell you know, replacement uh, systems or pen restorers will figure out how to restore the sack if there's enough of a demand for it. So you can probably tell I'm not overly excited about this design, especially this filling system. I like the way the pen looks. Pen BBS is very good at doing that. So I do like vermouth. I think it's a great resin. I like the dark green color. Mojito is a little bit lighter green, but in a similar color family. Here's a 355 uh, upgraded version. It has that insert to hold the draw filler system in place. Here's a 309, the must, must, much aligned piston filler. Here's a 308 with glossy gold trim. And this is my favorite so far. Is a 456 with matte gold. Ah, I love this pen. And Penboy Roy has one that I gave him. So that's my vermouth. You can see there's slight variations. A lot of it may have to do with the thickness of the wall. And I'm certain their resin source may have some variations when they make the vermouth rods. But you might say, Chris, you have more vermouth than you showed. And I say, yes, I do. I have two 480s here. Don't ask me why. I ended up with two. I like the color. So when I see them for sale, I buy them. I didn't check that I already had one. Here's that wonderful 348, that pump filler. 323. And I have a knife in vermouth. And just for comparisons, here's the mojito color. As you can see, it's much lighter than the vermouth color. And I think the vermouth, I see a little bit of blue in with the green. And this is more of a yellowish green. Yes, I like vermouth. Now, obviously, I'm not going to use uh, established ink that you might be all familiar with. I'm going to use a new ink. 
I bought this a bit ago from Venice because they had a sale on Pen BBS ink. And this is a nice dark green ink. Here's the bottle label. I'm not quite certain how you distinguish the ink's name. I put a rubber band on here because sometimes that lid can be a little bit tough to get off. We'll look inside the lid and we'll see a very nice dark green ink. And we'll expect some nice writing from that ink. Here's a sample on Tomo River paper. And as you can see, it is on the dark side. There's a little bit of uh, lightness here, but I think I had some oily stuff on the paper. I try to keep that off, but sometimes it gets on. But as you can see, it's a nice ink. Nice and dense color, which is what you kind of expected when we looked at the ink on the cap. So now it's that time for some editorial comments. Some dimensions. Here are the dimensions. And talk about my feelings about this 489 pen. Well, my first response is, is that I don't think this is as representative of Pen BBS's quality attention to detail as some of their other pens. I really dislike this white plastic insert. I'm certain it's in there to seal up that screw so it tightens up against that insert, but it just doesn't work visually. The other thing is, is that nib is pretty close to the top. Uh, you know, you figure they'd give you a millimeter more room so you could put other nibs in there, but then all Pen BBS nibs will fit fine. The finish is excellent. The smooth, good to the good to the touch. You know, like that little detail up there. There you can see the threads from the screw that's used to hold in that outer sleeve that's used to fill the pen with. The pen took one milliliter of ink filling. I tried to film, but I messed up the camera. So I heard and saw bubbles when I pushed down that sleeve, and then at the end, it drew up ink. And I just measured the weight of the pen. It weighed one gram more, which is equal to one milliliter. It's nice that the cap comes off in, you know, one and a quarter turns. I did mention it seemed to post, but I was mistaken. It really doesn't post yeah, you can put the cap there, but it doesn't stay. It posts very, very high. And again, they could have made a just a small change in dimension. And the filling system really isn't dependent upon the diameter of everything as long as that sleeve fits. So not the attention to detail of the design and engineering. The construction is nice. It's put together well. You know, there's always concern about this metal insert here because metal and plastic sometimes is a weak point. And also metal expands and contracts different than plastic, so that could degrade the connection between those two bits. But I haven't had any problems with uh, 456, which is done in that similar manner. Let's put some um, ink on paper, uh, give it a rating, and We'll cut to close out the video. So this is typical Pen BBS fine steel nib. You get some decent feedback. I think you can hear that. I don't mind it. And a little smoothing would probably reduce it a little bit. It's fairly wet, and this ink seems to be fairly wet. I do like the color, but then I'm easy to please. So I think we need to rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.1.
it doesn't get any checks. I just don't think that this is a pen that is worth bringing out in the marketplace. Yeah, it's a unique filling system to many people that aren't familiar with vintage, but it's been around for a long time, maybe close to 70 years. I think it was in the 50s when this first came out. I'll double check that and put a note on the video. But again, I'm a Penn BBS fanboy, so I got to have it. I got to get it. And I did order another one, and you'll see that one when it shows up. I ordered it from Penn BBS, and they're a little bit slower on shipping. This uh, came relatively quickly, which I always enjoy. Hope you like this look at a new pen. Um, hope this video finds all of you safe, healthy, and happy. And thank all of you for watching. I appreciate it. You know, comment, like, interact. I think it's good. It may add to your experience. And if you have a question, post it. And we'll see if we can get an answer. So enjoy your pens. Enjoy your inks. Enjoy putting nib to paper. Yeah, no flex, no real line variation. But then that's not what this nib is known for. And this one is typical of those nibs. If we've reached the end of this video, and we will say bye until the next one. Yeah, it's a consistent writer, which again is a PenBBS trait.